A lit in tin discussion with Lisa M. Kendrick. I acknowledge mine by Jane Goodall. Beginning in 1960, British naturalist and author Jane Goodall devoted herself to observing the behavior of wild chimpanzees in the Gombe Stream Chimpanzee Reserve in Tanzania. There, Goodall made some startling discoveries. For example, she saw chimpanzees make and use tools, disproving the theory that only humans use them. She also observed a chimpanzee adopt a younger orphaned chimpanzee. Because about 98% of chimpanzees' genetic material is identical to humans, chimpanzees have long been used by researchers for studying the progression and treatment of human diseases. In recent years, they have been used in the study of hepatitis C and HIV. The use of chimpanzees in research has grown increasingly controversial, however, and has been banned in some nations, including Great Britain, Sweden, and New Zealand. Writers use persuasive techniques to help convince readers about an issue. Such techniques include emotional appeals, statements intended to stir up strong feelings. Emotional appeals can be an important element of an effective argument. However, writers sometimes exaggerate problems or use appeals to pity to cover up logical fallacies or flawed reasoning. Goodall decided to help the chimpanzees in medical research labs after viewing a videotape that showed monkeys and chimpanzees suffering. The videotape had revealed conditions inside CIMA, a federally funded laboratory in Maryland. Goodall took action, criticizing CIMA. The president of CIMA denied these charges. Several months later, Goodall received permission to visit the laboratory. Remember that Goodall is using emotional appeals with words like crammed, tiny, cramped, and faces peering out from the semi-darkness. To emphasize her point, Goodall focuses attention on the plights of chimpanzees and readers can easily sympathize with orphaned and neglected animals who exhibit very human-like behaviors. Goodall describes her experience at LIMSIP, another research facility. She says infants in that nursery have a chance to play in an open area surrounded by toys, but as juveniles, chimps are confined in small cages, alone or with a partner, and subjected to experimentation. This contrast shows readers that the chimpanzees behave like human children, suggesting that their experience of being caged is as devastating as it would be for a human child. In lines 116 to 126, Goodall focuses on Jojo. She describes his plight to illustrate the suffering of all chimpanzees in research laboratories. She humanizes Jojo by mentioning his name, suggesting he dreams of his lost life, showing his heartbreaking gestures. This humanizing treatment makes the reader feel that Jojo should enjoy the same rights as people. Goodall strongly maintains that researchers have an obligation to the animals they use. First, researchers should learn about the animals and their natural behaviors to truly understand how their experiments affect these animals. Secondly, researchers should also observe the suffering they cause so that they can weigh the benefits against the suffering. And lastly, researchers should stop treating lab animals like criminals. Goodall feels that she owes a debt to chimpanzees because she learned so much about herself from chimpanzees and about the relationship of people to the natural world. Goodall understands their intrinsic value, not only to themselves, but also to people. She believes that the standard of what is ethical for humans should also be applied to these chimps. Goodall's views on experimentation are influenced by love and respect for animals. She believes that chimps are much like humans and that it is thus wrong to make them suffer. Her recognition of their intelligence, social bonds, and similarity to humans suggests that she believes chimps should be treated with the same respect as people, but she does not argue against all animal research because she believes it does save lives. Thanks for stopping by. 
Nothing enhances your cognitive abilities, increases your vocabulary, or expands your horizons more than reading. I hope you'll continue your journey with my other videos in this Lit in 10 discussion series.